Welcome to the webinar today. Uh, my name is Megan. I am training coordinator here at Nessie, and our webinar topic today is Get Basics for Researchers. Um, so we have our main presenter, Callum Wally, who is a member of Nessie's app support team. He will be assisted today by University of Auckland data scientist and software developer, Iron Perkins. Callum and Iron will be covering Git fundamentals so that it is hopefully easier for you guys to go out and try Git for yourselves once the webinar is over. Um, but this webinar is only one hour, so we won't have topics uh, time to dive into uh, the details of Git and GitHub. So if you have thoughts on topics we should include for next time or other feedback, I'll be inviting you guys to fill out a short survey at the end of our session today. But for now, um, before we get into, to, into the topic, I have a few housekeeping items to cover. So while Callum and Iron are presenting, we just ask that you keep your audio on mute. But if at any point you have a question, do feel free to pop it into the shared Q&A document, which I am going to post into the chat right now. Oops, let me post it in the right place. There you go. So that document, if you go in there, you'll see that you can post a question and we have a few different people monitoring that document. So you'll get answers in real time. Uh, we'll also be breaking regularly for questions. So if you do want to share something verbally at some point during the breaks, please indicate you want to unmute yourself by clicking the raise hand button in Zoom. Um, I'd like to see if we can practice doing that. Uh, if you go to the participants panel at the bottom of your Zoom screen, click on that and you can see the, the option to raise hand if you want to give that a try right now. Um, Awesome. And then I'll know that you want to unmute yourself just because we have quite a few people in this call today. That would be helpful. Um, lastly, the webinar recording and materials will be available on the Nessie website in the next few days. Those of you who registered for this webinar will get an email when that content is uploaded. Um, if you don't want to appear in the recording, make sure your video is turned off now by clicking the uh, icon in the bottom left of your screen. Um, and I think that's it for me for now. So with that, that stuff out the way, um, we're ready for you, Callum. Righto. Um, we were just judging you for your Reddit notifications, Megan. Um, <laughs> so um, hopefully the fact that you're here shows that um, you are, you know, at least somewhat interested in finding out what, oops, uh, get and get hopper for. Uh, Megan, can I share my screen now? Yeah, yep, you should be able to. So th there are a lot of um, sort of areas that uh, version control and Git and GitHub um, come into play. So, you know, I'm sure you've had some of these issues before. Um, I think most people are just immediately familiar with uh, what bad version control looks like. Um, so we're going to be covering that and also a little bit about collaboration. So we'll um, get to that now. So we're going to be covering just just the minimum necessary knowledge to to use Git or GitHub. There's nothing fancy. This is going to be just the bare minimum. This is like a half day, two day workshop in an hour. Um, so we're going to be doing basics of Git, uh, some really simple Git branching, how to use GitHub, and then some short examples of um, collaboration on GitHub. <clears throat> now, there's going to be a lot that we're not covering, so um, uh, don't don't message me saying, you know, oh, you left out this thing because I'm leaving out a lot of things. Uh, <clears throat> now, I've mentioned version control or source control, so that is just um, a word for a system of recording and managing changes. Um, so Git is an example of a version control system. Now, I just want to clarify the difference here between Git and GitHub. So Git is a version control system um, and GitHub is a website, it's a service. They're different things. Um, it's a very easy to make uh, uh, confusion there. Now Git is, um, it's free, it's open source, 
it's what's called a distributed version control system as opposed to a centralized one. So that means there is no official copy of your stuff. Um, something like Google Docs or OneDrive, there is an official copy of which everything else is derivative. In Git, there's no official. It's all considered the same. Um, it was originally made for developing Linux. So that's one of the explanations for how it got popular. Now, GitHub is, well, it's a website that hosts Git repositories, um, but it does a lot more than that. Uh, it's free and it's the, currently that, yeah, it's the largest source of um, source code in the world. You see it used for all sorts of weird extra stuff because of the other features it has. Um, it's used, people like write blogs on it, people, uh, you can host websites on it, uh, people have organized protests on it. Uh, it's the official source of legal code in Washington is a GitHub repo, um, which I think is quite interesting. So both of these things are actually useful on their own. Um, but combined, it, you know, is it, it's a lot more than the sum of the parts. So we're going to be teaching a little bit of Git and a little bit of how to use Git with GitHub. So like I said, you can use either without the other, but it's most effective when used together. Now, um, if you're on Linux or Mac, you will have Git installed, probably. Um, you can check that by opening up your terminal and typing git dash dash version. Um, Windows, you might download it. You just Google that. Um, you need to make sure that you get git bash. Um, that's one of the one of the things you can install because uh, we're going to be doing it command line today. Um, so yeah, Git is primarily command line based, uh, and that's all we're going to be looking at today. But there are a ton of GUIs out there, uh, graphical user interfaces. Um, that can do all sorts of fancy stuff with visualization of your Git repo and, um, and also integration. So integrate it into a lot of text editors. So it's probably worth, um, if you're using any of those programs or just, you know, whatever you're, whatever you're using as a text editor or whatnot, it's probably worth checking if there is Git integration because it's probably something you'll want to look into eventually. I mean, I, I personally use a combo of, um, command line sometimes, you know, um, VS code when I'm writing stuff and then maybe a, maybe a, um, a, a tree visualization if I'm feeling exciting. Um, so yeah, it's just something to look into. Um, now I only just found out yesterday that you're supposed to capitalize Git <laughs> when used, uh, when used as a, as a noun, but you'll just have to forgive me there. Now, um, I've already mentioned the term uh, repository or repo. I'm going to be saying repo from now on because too many syllables. Now, a repository is <clears throat> it's a record of changes. It's a record of changes of a file, not necessarily the file itself. Um, so yeah, think of it as a, as a lab notebook where you record your changes as you're doing them. Now, generally when we're using a repository on your computer, it will be in a directory, but it is not the directory. They are different things. There is the directory, and then there is the repository that is in that directory. So a lot of people sort of intuitively assume that if you put something in the directory where you initiated your repository, it's in the repository, but that's not the case. It's just in the same directory as the repository. Now, um, it helped me understand Git a lot, to to uh, to see that it is just it is just a folder, it is just a, a directory, a hidden directory with some stuff in it. Uh, so this stores all sorts of you know all of the metadata. Um, now I don't actually recommend like touching it. Don't mess with it. You'll break everything. But um, that is sort of the backup plan if you really really need to reset your repos. You can delete that. <clears throat> it just helped me uh, help me find Git less uh, terrifying to know that it is just a folder. Now, um, so your directory contains the files. We all know, we all understand that. Um, the repository is is sort of a, 
a layer on top of that. It's recording the changes. Now, like I suggested before, um, they aren't necessarily synonymous. So you can have untracked files. You can have files that are in your directory, but the repo doesn't care about. Um, it hasn't been added to. And you can also have the opposite. You can have files that have been tracked, are being tracked in the repo, but aren't currently in your directory. So an example might be, you just deleted a file. So it's still being tracked. Well, you know, records of its previous state are still there, but it's not currently in the directory. And there are a few other um, occasions where you might do something like that. Now, um, I'm just gonna do some um, examples in my shell here. So I'm currently logged into Mahuika, but any, wait, you can see that, right? You see my terminal, Megan? Yep. Yeah, um, I can see it, it's uh, maybe a bit small. Let's oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Say, say when. Mm, that's good, I think. Anyone have opinion? Is that good for everyone? Thumbs up if, if okay. that's okay. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> thank you. Okay, um, so, nope, I'll need to alt tab. The first command we're going to look at is git init, which is just creates a empty repository in the directory you're currently in. So I've got, uh, I made a directory here for the webinar. So it's just a, it's just a regular old folder, nothing special at the moment. So I run the command git init and we get initialized empty git repository in this directory. Now, like it says, it's empty. There's currently nothing in it. So the next step is we need to stage some files to put into it. Now, this diagram here, the working directory is, wait, there we go. <laughs> the working directory is where my files are. That's just, my, that's just the directory I'm in. Nothing mystical about that. Staging area is all of the files that you have flagged to be added to the repository. So I just want to make it clear that in this diagram, when I say we're moving to the staging area, I mean, we are, we are, in, the pro we are in, the, in the process of adding it to the repository. The file hasn't actually moved anywhere. It's still the same file. It's just been staged. It's been flagged to be added to the repo. And then there's one final step where we actually commit it to the repository. But for now, I will just show you how to add some files. So I'm gonna use the command git add. Um, so git add in the name of the file. You can also use patterns in there, so you can add lots of stuff. And then I'll show you git status, which shows you um, a lot of stuff. But So I'm going to use uh, git add, and then I'm gonna add my useful functions.py. Now, if I do run the command git status, I'm gonna switch between status and status because I can't make my mind up, where you see, um, on branch master, we'll get to that later, initial commit. Changes to be committed. So this is stuff in our staging area. New file, so what it is, usefulfunctions.py. It can also recognize what is in that directory that isn't being tracked. So these are all the things that are not being tracked. Now, you might not want to individually add every single file. So you'll want to do the command git add dash dash all, or you can just do git add star. Now, if we check again, oops, git status, we see, okay, everything's being committed now. Now, there are a few other commands sort of in the same vein as git add. Um, there is git rm and git mv. So, I'm, most of you will be familiar with what the rm command does. It, it deletes a, uh, a folder or a file. Um, and MV moves a file or renames it. Now, just adding the git command in front is just saying, I want you to look what I'm doing here. Um, so git rm will record the fact that you've deleted that file into the directory. If you just delete it without that command, um, it's not gonna know about it unless you tell it. Uh, git move, same sort of thing. If you just move a file and don't tell git about it, and then add everything later, it's gonna see that the file has disappeared. It's not there anymore. You've deleted it. And it's gonna see another one's appeared 
um, so that you've added it. So rather than just saying, oh, he, oh, oh they've moved this file, it's going to say file deleted, file created. So git move is just, uh, just better at tracking what's happening. So it's a matter of tidiness um, more than anything. So going back to my, uh, my shell here, um, all of the stuff has been added to my staging area. Now, a lot of the time you don't want a lot of stuff added. So there's a lot of stuff here, you know, trash. So this is, you know, temporary files from my text editor, possibly stuff I don't want committed into my repo. Um, maybe there's all sorts of reasons why you might not want to put something in there. So <clears throat> yeah, maybe large data sets or out outputs that are regenerated every time and you don't actually want to record. So we can use something called a git ignore file. So a git ignore file is just, it's just a text file in your repository where you write a list of patterns that you want to be excluded. So it's using blob patterns, which is what you use in bash shell. Um, if you don't know what that is, then just Google um, git ignore patterns. So down here, there's a few examples. Actually, I will just, um, I will just make a git ignore file. So, um, dot git ignore and so it starts with a full stop which means it's a hidden file so if you're on windows you might have to enable uh, view hidden folders or whatever that command is um, now what do i want it to be ignored i want to ignore everything in that pi cache directory so pi ca cache and everything in there so pi cache all of its contents i want you to ignore I also want you to ignore anything that ends in dot uh, swap. So swap files are the files made by Vim, which is the text editor I'm using here. Also, if you're using Emacs, it'll be uh, ends in tilde, I think. So delete everything that ends in tilde. What else? I also want you to ignore everything in the directory, uh, I think, what was it called? Import, important files. Don't take any of that. Now I can add, uh, I can leave blank lines for like tidiness. It's not going to match everything by leaving a blank line. And uh, you can put in comments just uh, with, with hash, same as with Python or bash. Now, if I save that, I'm just going to unstage all of my files. So um, I can do that using git reset. Now we're not going to go into it, um, go over git reset that much because it's not something you do that often, but I'm just uh, unstaging everything. And I can check that by going, oh, Sorry, git status. So it's not tracking anything. It has nothing in the commit there. So I'm going to do git add dash dash all again. And I should see when I run git status again, it's committing the dot git ignore file because I, I do actually want to do that. It's committing input data dot CSV and it's committing useful functions dot pi. All the rest of that stuff's been ignored, which is exactly what I want. Um, right. So the file is now in the staging area. Now, again, the file hasn't moved. It's still in the same directory, but it is in the staging area now as well. So that was using the git add command. Now, the, uh, the final step is to commit it. So, oh, I just realized that my, my uh, diagram there was covered up. So it's in the staging area now, and then we're going to commit it using the command git commit. So committing takes all of your stage changes and records them officially in the repo. Now, you generally want each commit to be a distinct thing. Um, you, you shouldn't be doing a commit after every small change you make. The idea is you commit something like, uh, you know, uh, I have implemented, you know, implemented change X or, you know, um, fixed bug Y. You shouldn't be doing just like ch change five or um, I'm, I'm guilty of doing a full stop a lot as a commit. Um, don't do that. It should be a chunk of stuff that is distinct um, from some other work. Now, um, when you run git commit, it will open up your default text editor and prompt you for a commit message. So that is just a summary of what you've done. And yeah, try, try be good and write something semi-descriptive. 
Now there's also, um, uh, if you're, you know, lazy uh, or, you know, want to be efficient with your time, you can git commit dash m and then just type, a, type the message in after. Just save you having to open up your um, text editor. And another very important one, um, which is a useful little trick, is git commit dash dash amend. Now what that does is it adds whatever your stage changes are to whatever you committed previously. So if I've just committed something to my repo and I've realized, oh, I've made a typo, um, I don't want to make a whole new commit message for this. I don't want my, my repository history to be filled with fixed typo because that's what it would be for me at least. Um, so you can run git commit amend and it will sort of add it to your previous one. Um, right, so I'm going to do that now, I'll show you an example. So um, I'll just, I was going to compulsively run, run status again, but I don't need to. Git commit and it's going to open up this. Unfortunately, my Vim color scheme is pretty awful. Um, <laughs> there's this comment here, all this stuff here is commented out, um, which means it won't be in your commit message, but it's just, that's just for you. So you know what's going on. So I'm going to name, I'm going to say uh, first commit. So a very um, boring name for a commit message. And we see it, it's going to record what's happened there. Um, right. So what we've done is we've, we've initiated a new repository. We've, um, Oh, here we go. We've initiated a new repository. We've uh, taken some files from our working directory. We've staged them, and now we've committed them properly to the repository. Uh, now, on that, on its own, that's you know, the use. You're, you, there is some use to it, but we're going to go into some more detail um, about some other stuff in a sec. I think uh, we'll just have a quick pause to see if there are any outstanding questions, Megan. Right, yes, so there have been just a couple in the Google Doc, but they are currently being answered at the moment. Does anyone want to raise their hand or ask something verbally or even just um, get further explanation on something? If so, you can either put it in chat, raise your hand as we kind of practiced beforehand. I'll, we'll give you just a, uh, a few seconds to think of anything. Um, but anything that needs clarification, we're happy to go through that. Right, that, that's enough seconds. <laughs> Actually, I have a quick question. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh, for so, do you keep the Git uh, repository in your project working directory? Uh, you mean in Mahuika? Pardon me. You mean uh, when you say in your project directory, are you talking about on on Mahuika? Uh, well, uh, for any types of like, let's say I want to use Git for my project, would you like? Uh, would you recommend putting it putting it directly in my working directory? Um, well, what is uh, able to be recorded in, in the repo is everything in the directory that you've initiated your repo in, and all subdirectories. So. Um, if your project working directory is what you want to record, then you're going to have to initiate your Git repo in that. Okay. Yeah. It can't. It can't record anything that's above it in the working tree. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Uh, right. Okay. Let's move on. So we're going to cover branches now. So branching is the process of creating a separately tracked copy of your files. So what we were talking about before, it's the log of changes. Um, but it's within the same repository. So it's the same repository. You're not copying your repository, but you're creating a separate tracked copy of your files. Now, um, one of these, um, you know, copies is called a branch. Now, when we talk about to branch something, we mean we are creating another copy of this. So um, you're creating another copy of that, those track changes. Uh, Conventionally, we call the default branch um, master. That's not a like special term. That's not a technical term. That's just convention. Um, and you could name whatever your, you know, your branches or whatever. Now, this is something you'll want to do when you're doing changes, when you're doing tests or, you know, you're testing out a new feature because you can 
branch off your master. You can mess around, do whatever. And then you can either just chuck that branch out or you can merge it back into your master branch. So merging is the process of incorporating the changes from one branch into another branch. Um, we're not going to go into merging too much because that is a uh, very, can be a very complicated topic, but uh, I just thought I'd mention it. So the actual command for doing that is git branch and then name whatever your branch is. So that's the command that creates a new branch. You're still actually on your master branch at this point. Um, you need to use the git checkout command to actually move to the new branch. So I'm going to do that now. So I'm going to run git, nope, not got git um, branch, and then we'll call it a uh, new branch. Again, you'd probably want to be more descriptive than that, um, but I don't actually know what I'm going to change. So git branch, new branch. And now I'm going to use the command git check out new branch. So again, checkout is just the command you use to change the branch you're on. Now, if I get a bit confused as to what branch I'm on, I can run git status again, and it'll tell me what branch I'm on. Right, now, so my diagram here, what we just did is, uh, so we ran the command git branch, new branch, that copies the branch, makes a new branch. <laughs> I'm saying the word branch too much. Um, we then checked out the new branch. So the working branch changed from master to the new branch. We can then make whatever changes we want. Those changes will be done to that branch. It'll be recorded against the new branch. And then when we're done, we can switch back. We can check out the master branch. So checkout does two things. It applies whatever changes are on that new branch you've just switched to. And then that makes that where your changes are being tracked against in future. Um, now, it is important that you make sure there are no unrecorded changes. Uh, so nothing in your staging area um, when you switch branch. Because if you think of it, the files just in your directory, um, they're not necessarily on a branch at this point. So if you try and switch branch, it'll be a bit confused as to where those are supposed to be, where those changes should be recorded. So you always need to uh, do a git commit. So commit them specifically to the branch you're on or do a git stash. Now we're not gonna go into git stash too much here. At this point, we'll just assume git stash is like chuck out all of our changes. Um, if you don't, uh, if there are sort of hanging changes and you try to switch branch, that will it will complain at you. <clears throat> Okay, that is a very short introduction to branches. Uh, any questions on, on, on that before we move on to GitHub? Let's see, I don't see any um, unanswered things in the question doc, but I'll wait a second if anything comes up in the chat or if anyone wants to unmute, now would be the chance. Cool, we'll keep going. Not even running behind, which is quite unusual for me. Oh, um, wait, I think what, oh, no, never mind. Sorry, that was an answer, not a question. Go on, Callum. Okay, cool. So now on to the, uh, the other half of the equation. So GitHub, which is the service separate from the version control system. Uh, now we're gonna have to cover a few, a few bits of terminology first. Um, so when someone's talking about their local repo, they're talking about the repository that they're on right now, the one they're working on right now. So on their computer usually. Um, and when we're talking about a remote repository, we're talking about a repo that's just somewhere else. Uh, generally when people say, you know, talk about their remote, they're generally talking about GitHub. They're not talking about like someone else's computer, although it technically could be. Um, and it's generally upstream. Uh, we're gonna get to that term in a second. Um, now, it pays to be careful. Um, local is used to describe a lot of things in computers and computer science. So if someone says they're local, they could be talking about their local repository. They could be talking about their local computer, their local network, 
their local bar. So just make sure you know what context that that local is being used in. Um, so it doesn't only mean local repository. Now, if we are pushing it, if we are taking a change from our local machine and we want to impose it on a remote uh, repo, we are pushing changes. Um, and when you are doing the opposite, you're getting changes from the remote and taking it to your local, you're pulling. Uh, so that's sort of intuitive terminology there, but push to a remote, pull from a remote. Now that term upstream. Uh, so I mentioned at the start that Git is a decentralized language. So it's distributed. Um, there is no official, um, you know, cop master copy as it were. Uh, but it's generally useful to work in a way similar to this. So when we're talking about upstream slash downstream, we're talking about uh, the relationship between two repositories um, in terms of which one is uh, the, more, the more correct one, as it were. So again, it's not a technical, it's not a precise technical term, it's just descriptive. Um, but you might say that uh, say the official release of a uh, bit of code base um, that is upstream of you because if they make a change that change is probably going to flow down to you as in you're going to pull in that change if you make a change they're unlikely to care they're probably not going to pull your change back okay so it describes the the flow of changes um, now again, it's not that's not uh, a one hundred percent rule. It's not saying that uh, they they can't pull changes if they if you have made some you know particularly uh, good improvement on their code, they might pull your code upstream to uh, to their more official version. So changes usually flow from upstream to downstream. It's not a technical term. It's just a descriptive one. <clears throat> Okay, I'm actually going to make a Git repo now. Uh, so I'm just, so uh, making a GitHub account is, is free. Um, and you can do pretty much everything on a free, on a, uh, on a, on a free account. So you don't have to worry about it too much. Um, I'm gonna go to Git here and I'm going to create a new repository. Now you wanna give it a descriptive name so uh, git uh, webinar 2020 and uh, uh, something descriptive. Now I'm gonna stick with the public repo, it's just generally easier. Um, and I'm not gonna bother adding any of this stuff for now. So create repository. So this is a completely empty repository. Now git is GitHub is quite uh, you know it's quite handy. It gives you all the commands you need to um, you know create a new repository from the command line. But we already have a repository, um, so we're going to push an existing repository from the command line. So that's going to be done using the git remote command. Now I'm just going to copy this so I don't have to type it out. Um, so git remote add name path. So that will add a remote called x at path. Uh, again, this is only convention, but you'll see it a lot. Uh, we usually name the upstream remote origin. Um, so again, standard terminology. So I'm going to do that now. I'm going to paste that. <laughs> Git remote add origin. I now have an origin, a remote called origin. Now, I'm going to actually want to get some changes there. So next, what I'm going to do is git push, and then again, the name of the uh, remote and the branch, if I want to set a branch. So I'm going to git push origin master. And we see it's sending that upstream. So we just see a little printout here of what's happened. We've created a a new branch on the repo master and we've pushed our master to it. Now if I actually go here um, 
I can refresh and oh, there's my there's my repository. Now there are a ton of useful features in uh, GitHub. There's no time to go over them all, um, but a few things. There's an inbuilt text editor, so you can just change them if you want. Um, you can get a list of uh, the history of your commits. So this is what I was, this is why it's important to not um, you know spam too much, um, and you can change your branch with this tag here. But again, I, it's worth just uh, it's worth just having a play around because um, there is a lot. Now I'm going to add uh, Iron now to my project. So I'm just going to um, add a collaborator. Uh, Now, a collaborator can do pretty much everything. So you're not going to, um, right. yeah. Uh, so you're only gonna wanna add people you trust. Um, they can't delete your repository, but they can do pretty much everything else. Now, um, okay, just going back to, my diagram again, except now there's a extra step, there's a remote. So we have gone all the way from our working directory, we've staged it, we've pushed it to our local repository, and now we have pushed it to our remote repository. Um, now, just a bit of uh, sort of, I don't know if you could call it best practice, but this is what you will be doing most of the time. Uh, now, provided you're working by yourself, or in a smallish team and you try not to like both work on the same file at the same time, you shouldn't have any uh, merge conflicts. There's no reason to have a merge conflict. Um, provided you make sure you always pull from your upstream remote, so you have the most up-to-date version of whatever you're working on, then you add your changes, you commit your changes, and then you push upstream. So. If you stick to this rule, you shouldn't have any, any merge conflicts uh, unnecessarily. So I'm just gonna do that now. I will, um, oh wait, no, wrong screen. I'm going to make a small change to one of my files. Um, I'm going to uh, just iterate the version number because that's an easy change to make. Um, Fix, fix a bug. So now I'm going to git add useful functions. I can now git status. Cool, I've modified that. I'm going to git commit and I'm just gonna do the message this way. Um, uh, increase v number uh, small bug fix big boog fix. And then I'm going to push upstream. So git push uh, remote, sorry, git push origin and then master. Um, you can actually set, uh, you can set a default um, upstream. So you can just do git push, but I'm gonna do it the full way here. And there we go. So, wait, did I not commit? Git commit push origin master. Mm. Um, so that's the general sort of uh, procedure by which you will you will uh, make your changes in Git. Uh, okay, we're going to go on to a little bit of collaborative stuff now. So um, uh, I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Uh, and Iron is going to share hers. I think there's oh. a, a one oh. question first. Yes, sorry, questions. Um, so one that just came in. So I, I already use GitHub Desktop. Any advantages in switching to Git Bash? Um, oh. Not writing code full time, uh, hence the appeal for visual aspect of GitHub Desktop. Um, <laughs> sorry, I just realized the sun's in a really inconvenient position there. You don't need to see my face. Um, if you're already used to using um, GitHub Desktop, then that's fine. It's just a uh, command line is the sort of lowest common denominator. It's the same for everyone. Um, I think it's good to learn 
the basics of what you're doing before you get too into a GUI because you can get uh, you can get really caught up in features that you really don't need to be messing with, um, especially with a with one that prints out your whole tree. So I think it's worth to, worth understanding just the very basics um, and then moving on to a GUI. But if you already know how to use it, then that's um, that's fine. Um, so GitHub Desktop is GitHub's GUI. Git also has a GUI called uh, I think it's just Git Desktop. Um, so that's the Git desktop is the one you'll have by default. It'll be installed if you install Git on a Windows. <clears throat> Any other questions? Um, some things are being answered in the doc, but you can go ahead, Callum. I think that's all under control. Cool. Okay, well, it's Iron, Iron now. Sure. Yeah, I'll take over. And uh, so today I'm going to be demonstrating how I would collaborate with Callum on a team. So tell me if you can't see my screen, but I assume you can. Um, I'm in Callum's uh, GitHub repo here. And so just for a refresher, uh, Callum has his local repo. That's what he was showing on Mah Mahu, um, on, on his uh, <laughs> command line. You'll have to tell me how to say it. Mahuika. Mahuika. All right. Yep. And then GitHub is in blue here, and that's what we're uh, agreeing is the central repo. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a local copy of that repo here in, on my terminal. So I'll just go into GitHub, and there's this clone or download button, and I can click on the on the clipboard. Oops, it didn't actually work. So the curse of the live demo. I'll just copy that. That was that was the name of my previous. Uh, test repository, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, it was. And the spelling of test. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, oh, I thought that would. So I'll do git clone, and then uh, the location of the repo which I've copied, and then the dot means put it uh, in my local directory. Dot already exists. Okay. If you if you just leave the dot off, it will make it in a directory. Um, if you use if you add a path afterwards. It has to be to a empty directory, um, so it's 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 easy generally to just um, just let it name it whatever it wants. Sure, yeah, it's useful to see us working through some problems too. And I have uh, I have purposely included um, some mistakes that you'll see later. So, and uh, the point here I wanted to show is it doesn't dump everything into the current directory. It it puts it in its own um, in its own directory here. So if I do pwd, I'm showing you I'm in uh, my home directory in git demo, and then there's this git, web git webinar 2020. So I'll just cd into that, and we can see the useful functions and the input data.csv, and also, oops, I made this too big. Um, so there's also, uh, there should be the git ignore here, so you can see that. All right. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to create my own branch. So Callum's already talked about branching a little bit, and I want you to think about um, if you're working in like Google Docs, and maybe there's a lot of people on there, and you happen to click onto the same line that someone's already typing on, and if you start typing, it gets a bit jumbled. And that's the same sort of thing that happens if everybody's working on master and everybody's pushing to master. You can interrupt uh, work somebody's doing. So I will create a branch, and what a branch does is it, it just allows you to work on the same file without uh, interrupting somebody else's work. So I'll just say iron demo, get status. So if I do get status, you'll see that I'm still on branch master. So I've created iron demo, but now I need to do a git checkout to switch to that branch. And if I do git status again, you'll see which branch I'm on. And if I do an LS, you'll see that I have everything that was already in Git that Callum has put in here. So it's not creating new files, it's just uh, tracking the work that you're doing. So I'll just make uh, a quick change into useful functions. Oh, this is quite large. I'm gonna have to move my Zoom window. So, uh, I apologize for the layout. So, um, hold on. That's it's a very funky color scheme. scheme. <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, um, sorry about that. It's just a Vim thing. So um, we can trust that you're making changes. Yeah, we can trust that I'm making changes. So um, for here, get first index of array. Um, we're changing here. I can highlight it so you can see it. So it was returning index one. Callum was thinking in R. I want to think in Python. So it's zero based. So I'm going to quickly change that. And then, you know, maybe I can make some changes down here, but you can't see it. So let's just make it. <laughs> All right. So if I do get status, you can see that I've modified useful functions.py. So just to refresh um, where we are. So I'm in my working directory and I haven't put anything in the staging area yet. So if I go here, um, I can add useful functions.py into the staging area. So get add useful functions.py and show you what I've done. Now it's green and it says modified. Um, it showed up a little bit differently on uh, Callum's terminal, but I, I have uh, colors and he, uh, he had a non-color option. So where I am now is I've put, I've put this file into the staging area and now I can um, do a git commit so that I push the change into my local repository. So git commit and I'll add a message m um, bug fix array is zero based. All right and now so this is the scenario that we're in, that I'm working in my local repo and I want to share my changes to Callum's GitHub repo. And from there, he can sync it back to his local. So- Oh, it's worth mentioning real quick that because you uh, cloned the repository, mm -hmm. there is already a remote called Origin. So um, because it was cloned, she doesn't need to add anything. It's already there. Mm, we'll see about that. This is where I've oh, okay. made a mistake. <laughs> So I'm going to do git push origin. And you can see I got an error. So Callum wasn't quite right there. So what it's saying is the current branch, Iron Demo, has no upstream branch. So what we can do is we can run this command that creates a new branch called Iron Demo uh, in upstream. So let's just do or that. Or you could specify um, git push origin master. That's the other way to do it. Sure. Um, but we don't want to push it to master, do we? No, we don't. Yes, you're right. <laughs> okay. I told Git to remember my credentials, but it hasn't. Just give me a moment. So. Cool. So now it's pushing up. All right. So let's look at what happened in Git. So let's refresh this. Yeah, I was thinking about it. This is the part where my internet connection fails, huh? Okay, so um, you can see that I've made a new branch. Your recently pushed branches, Iron Demo, and there's this button that says compare and pull request. So I'm gonna click on that and uh, you should leave a message about what this is. Uh, I would put, so, if I were working like on a professional team, this commit message would probably be like a ticket number or a work item. And then the longer description would be a summary of what I've changed. But since it's really simple, I'm going to leave it how it is and create the pull request. Um, so it, it checks the, the ability to merge. Um, as Callum said, we're not getting into that today, but uh, further further get tutorial, it would be good to get into what this means. So you can view the files that changed. And so it shows that this line was modified. So I removed this line and I added this line. That's what the red and green means. And then I've added a blank line at the bottom for no good reason. And yeah. So I'm now going to get, I'm now going to get a message saying, um, Iron's open day uh, pull request. Could you um, just go to the slides real quick? Iron? And yep. then we'll go to the slide about this. Um, All right. Uh, so that one, nope, one above not that. This one. Yep. So, <clears throat> like I say, it's not good practice to push straight to uh, the master branch of your remote. It's sort of all right if you're working by yourself because, uh, you know, you're only going to sabotage yourself. But like Aaron said, if you're working with multiple people, you don't want to be editing the same line. So, 
it's good practice to push to a separate branch. It also makes it a lot easier to track um, like when features are added because it's not just all a mishmash and master. You'll have the branch for the time I added the thing and the time I added the other thing and you'll see when they were merged in. So you push to a branch that's separate. Um, now then we do what uh, what I just did there is we create a pull request. So the terminology can be a bit confusing. Um, it's it's functionally similar to a push, but you are asking them to do a pull. <laughs> so um, it's it's coming from their end. Um, so I'm going to um, now yeah. uh, have a message. Sorry, just to just to belabor that point, here it mm -hmm. says Iron OP wants to merge one commit into master from this branch Iron demo. So th this is my request, like please pull into master. So um, you might not always be choosing master, like if you're in like a big software development team, maybe you want to merge it into like a feature branch or something like that. For the purposes here, it's a really simple repo. Master is what everybody's tracking. That's why I'm doing the pull request into master. So I'm just going to uh, um... I don't know if you want to share, Callum. Uh, no, that's not much point. Uh, yeah. So I, I've um, I've just reviewed um, I've just reviewed Iron's changes, and I've said <laughs> not to allow that in, because um, I am the dictator of this repository, and I will not have you fixing my bugs. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> but yeah, so that's how you so that's how you do it if um, you're working with someone who you've given permission to edit your repository. So Iron could have actually pushed straight to my master branch, but she didn't because that would be rude. Um, but if you don't actually have permission, you can still make a pull request. Um, you just have to do it slightly differently, which Iron's gonna go through now. Yep, so uh, I think I'll show this diagram first. So previously, this was the scenario we were working in where I had permission. We're not seeing the diagram there. You're not seeing the diagram here. It says I'm sharing my screen. I'll just stop and share again. So share screen. Wait, wait, wait maybe we were. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. Here we are again. <clears throat> so this this was the previous scenario where I had permission to push directly into this GitHub repository. Maybe uh, we don't have that permission, or maybe we want better tracking of changes if we have a larger team. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create my own GitHub repository. And this will still, Callum's will still be the, like the master, like the central authority repository, but I can make changes from mine, from my local, push it into my GitHub repo and then create pull requests here. So that's just generally better practice. Um, but what you do is you click this fork button. Fork is like clone, except it's from GitHub to GitHub instead of GitHub to local. So I'll just click fork and then we'll get a cute animation about forking a GitHub repo. Should only take a few seconds. So, all right, cool. So a couple things to notice uh, here, it shows me what repository I'm working in and see it says Iron OP, it's uh, inside of my own GitHub repository. So now I'm here, all right. And previously it says forked from Callum, uh, Callum's account slash get, get webinar 2020. This is the curse of the live recording. I trip over my words. So we can click here and we can see everything that happened, but I'll just go back um, into mine. And then I would do the same thing, clone or download. I can copy this. I can work in my terminal and I would do, you know, I would do the branching and the pushing as I did before. Since we've seen that, I'm going to do it a little bit more quickly. Um, but just a good practice, I would be working on my machine. What I'll show you is that I can go into usefulfunctions.py and I can click this edit button. This would be useful. You can edit directly um, into, the web, uh, into the web browser. Um, it would be useful if you're doing like text files or you know, if you're just making quick comments to your collaborators. If you're doing software, it's really important that you do it on your local machine so that you can test your differences instead of just asserting, I know what I'm doing, I never write bugs, because I don't <laughs> think that's true. All right, so I'm going to, I'm going to return array sub zero 
You're going to try again. Try, I'm going to try, try again. again. Yeah. Yeah. And just, just to make it extra clear, I'm going to add <laughs> myself to the list of collaborators. All right. So, um, yep. So, and then it asks me if I want to commit directly into the master branch. I'm going to do this here just for the purposes of the demo. But the reason that I'm kind of okay with it here and I wasn't before is I'm committing into my repository. I'm the only one working on my repository. I'm not committing it into Calum's. So previously, if I put it directly into master, it would clash with Calum. But here, since I have my own repository, I know what I'm doing. I feel pretty confident. I'll just put it directly into master bug fix of array indexing. <coughs> Uh, iron added to collaborators. Oh, nope. Yeah, that's all right. Fine. Okay, and then I will commit my changes. And then, if I go back into Callum's repository, I can. I should be able to do a pull request. Um. So. What have I done? So you, you can do that from your repo or you can do it from um, my yeah. repo. I think it's generally easiest if you go from yours. Oops, I just did that again. Okay, let's go here. Yeah. New pull request. This is the curse of the live demo. I'm going yeah, live. Yeah. Thank demo you very much. It happens. Yep. So um, this, it, this view is a little bit different where we have the base repository. So that's upstream. So base repository, and then we have head repository. So that's here. And then uh, you can choose which branch you want to merge into. So master to master. And then I can create the pull request and that's all the same as we saw before. A couple of things I wanted to point out before my demo is over is if I go into the Git webinar 2020, there was this fork button but and next to it there's a smaller button that has a number by it and this number means how many collaborators have forked the repository so i'll just click on that and you can see a contributor tree so um, this is highlighted in yellow it means that we've all collectively agreed that uh, callum's repo is like the official central repository so if you were like on a team or you had larger collaborators maybe you would have an account that was like the name of your organization and then the repo would be like what particular project you're on and Callum and I would both have forked that repo. But in this case, it's just two of us. We work pretty well together. So um, we can synchronize uh, which one is the official repo. So, but um, you don't actually, anyone can take a fork. So uh, you don't have to have any sort of permissions. So, um, you know, if you were to all go onto my repo and fork it, we'd see, you know, all of you turn up there. So um, this is just a nice way of organizing it. Um, uh, Aaron, sure. can you go back to the slides again? Just um, the slide on forking. So I think, I think the terminology can be quite confusing. Um, so for starters, fork is sort of general software development terminology for, uh, you know, having a, a code base diverge into two different things. Um, mm -hmm. But it's, it is GitHub terminology for copying a GitHub repo. So when we're talking about cloning something, that is a, that is a Git um, word um, for copying another Git repo. Now, a GitHub repo is a Git repo. Um, so you can clone from your GitHub. Fork is GitHub terminology for making a copy of another GitHub repo that's owned by you. And branch is, is, you know, separate from that. It's within the same repository you're branching. So three different words that mean three different things. Um, now, I think that was, we should probably stop for questions real quick um, on, on that whole process. Yeah, Callum and Iron yeah. are actually at time. So we're at one o'clock. So mm -hmm. I was wondering how much longer that you guys had um, and if we're ready for a wrap um, up soon. A couple more minutes. I can, I can. Uh, I've got another meeting, but I'd rather, I'd rather answer questions. <laughs> um, could you put up that slide again? Um, I heard uh, that, Colin. Oh, oh no, <laughs> my boss. <laughs> um, 
Uh, could you put that slide up again? Or, or I guess I can sure. Try. Yeah, why don't you share? Um, mm -mm. Uh, you... Mm, that's my terminal. Um, this one here. Uh, oops. So uh, I was supposed to. Um, oh, uh, that was supposed to be something more descriptive. But uh, our, our, our consultancy team. Uh, Getting you set up with Git is probably the first thing they would do anyway. Um, so uh, go sign up if you want to want a consultancy. Um, and yeah, so questions, Megan. What what were the uh, any any standout? Uh, so I don't see anything super stand. Well, let's see. Um, so there was one question in the chat. So if we have several versions of a file in GitHub, how can we get access to the previous versions? Uh, yep. So you'll see. Um, you can open up your commit um, history here, and you can see um, this browse the repository at this point in history. So if I had more commits, I would be able to. Uh, you know, go back. And um, you can also, uh, I believe you can actually roll forward from here. So I can do a pull request from my past into my master. But that's, uh, that's, that's going into some stuff we haven't really covered. But yes, you can, you can do that. Um, and you can also um, brow look at the, uh, which button is it? You can also check the differences between each commit. Um, it's very, GitHub is very feature rich. You can do pretty much everything you want to. <laughs> A brief note, I guess, on that is that the designers of GitHub assumed that you wouldn't be trying to roll back one file in isolation. Because if you're working on a project, uh, say a, a programming project that has several files, usually there are interdependent changes. Yeah, but, but you can break that rule and actually pull a single file. But yeah, you probably yes. shouldn't. Uh, oh, yeah. Also, I, I didn't mention, but. Um, uh, so Git, Git is not the only version control system. There are lots of other version control systems. Git is the most uh, popular one, and I think a lot of that is because of GitHub. Also, GitHub is not the only remote Git repository. There's competitors, um, but uh, again, it's the most popular one. So um, I, I, uh, no brand loyalty here. It's just the most, uh, most used one. And now just one more question, and we should be wrapping up soon. I don't want to be taking people's time. Um, how can I make sure that the files on my computer are not overwritten if I pull? Um, it won't let you do that. It will come up with a, a merge conflict, and it will say, hey, something's wrong here. You need to resolve this. Um, again, uh, getting into how to resolve merges is like at least a whole nother two hours. Um, so that's why I think it's it's good to just try and avoid it if possible. But um, yeah, you can read up about how to do merges. Um, uh, so that's if you've committed a that's if you've committed a change locally that clashes with the change that you would pull down remotely. If you haven't staged and committed the change yet, then when you try to pull, it will just tell you that you would overwrite changes in your working directory and that you're going to have to commit or stash before proceeding. It, yeah, it, it complains. So, Yeah, I generally use git stash unless I have something important, in which case I'll make a branch. Um, we didn't get in that today, get into that. Yeah, but, no, um, stash was just a, a delete. <laughs> that's not true, because you can do a stash yeah. pop and reapply yeah, I, I know, but it's as far as um, this was concerned. Yeah, but I, I think for... Um, you know, what you were saying, we should cover that in another session. It would be really useful. Mm -hmm. Oops, actually, no, I was going to demo not committing a change. Um, so get pull. So I've, I've made a change locally um, and I haven't committed it or anything. Um, oops, get pull uh, origin master. Um, Okay. Oh, yeah, because I didn't commit the change, of course. But yeah, so that, that wouldn't have overwritten anything because um, that wasn't added. But yeah, you, you, don't have to, you don't have to really worry that much about uh, get overwriting your files. It, it, it's more, it's oversensitive, if anything. Um, that's probably what you'll find. You'll, you'll go, this seems like a really easy thing to do. Why are you complaining about it? <clears throat> Great. So is that... Um 
do you, in, anything else from you two before before I do a little wrap up? No, I'm, nothing for me. You ready? Cool. Um, just one little thing. I kind of diverged with Callum about uh, which I prefer to learn in greater detail, the command line or the GUI. I find the GUI like super useful, and I would encourage people to go off and pick their favorite one, like Git Kraken or Git Desktop, and learn how to use that. Um, when you get to merging, and you will, it makes the whole process a lot easier. Cool. All right, guys. So I'm just going to share my screen really quickly, I, it, which will stop your screen share, but that's all right. And um, so, uh, so that's it. That's all we have time for today's webinar. I know it was a lot of information, so feel free to rewatch that recording a few times if you need to. Um, and as I said in the chat, if there's enough interest, we might be able to coordinate a more in-depth online Git training. If this is something you could be interested in, we really need to get some feedback from you on what sort of things that you want to get more training on. So I will post a link to that survey that I've prepared in the chat. There's also some resources in the um, Q&A document at the top. So if you want to have a look at those, that's, uh, there's some nice information there. Um, and of course, if you have Nessie specific questions, uh, the best way to get help from us is to email us at support at nessie.org.nz. Um, so keep an, out, an eye out for the recording and slides. And thank you to Callum and Iron. Oh my gosh, I forgot your name on the inside, Iron. I'm sorry. <laughs> Terrible. Oh, person. I see how it is. <laughs> Callum's my favorite. That's. <laughs> um, and thank you guys so much for coming. Have a great afternoon.